getting up and down reliably from 150 to 200 feet out is arguably one of the biggest things that separates the professionals from the amateurs. And having a solid upshot game is going to drastically reduce your scores on the course and take a lot of pressure off your putting. This is our complete guide to throwing upshots. The goal of an upshot is to land your disc as close to the bottom of the basket as possible. You're not really trying to throw these in usually. If a disc passes a basket at chain height from 150 or 200 feet out, that usually means it's going to carry a little bit past the basket. And that's where you end up with a lot of those circles edge or just outside the circle putts that can add up to a lot of stress and a lot of missed strokes over the course of a round. Usually when throwing an approach shot, it's best to throw a hyzer because the disc is going to stay on the same angle the whole time and a hyzer is the most consistent shot in disc golf. Throwing a straight shot usually requires a slightly less overstable disc and that means that it might turn a little bit or be a little bit less reliable in the wind and throwing a perfectly flat shot is kind of hard. If you accidentally miss on a little bit of hyzer, it ends up curving pretty far to the left or a little bit of anhyzer curves pretty far to the right. But if you plan for that hyzer release, you have a kind of a bigger margin of error to land your disc in. And an anhyzer, usually if you're throwing the correctly paced shot to where it just lands at the base of the basket, it's going to start to fade out towards the end and that ends up changing a lot of angles and that can mess with your ground play or in the wind. Now when there is a lot of wind, especially a crosswind, I will try to always keep the top of my disc into the wind. So if I have a left to right wind, as a right-handed player, I'm gonna try and throw a hyzer because that's going to push the disc down and help it stick and grab the ground right next to the basket. But if I have a right to left wind, I'm usually gonna throw a forehand hyzer because the hyzer is gonna be just as consistent as before and that forehand shot is going to help keep the top of the disc into the wind so the wind can knock it down and help keep it accurate. When choosing a disc for your upshots, it's best to choose something that's overstable because that fits that hyzer flight path the best. Something understable is going to change angle a lot and that can mess a lot with your results. A little bit of a miss at the beginning tends to result in a bigger margin of error down the line. Usually you're also going to want to pick a slower disc just because that's going to have less ground play. If you throw an upshot with something faster, like a, a nine speed or a 13 speed, it's gonna tend to skip when it hits the ground, especially if there's not as much grass, like there typically is around baskets from people putting and getting their discs out. That can result in a lot longer putt than you're expecting if the disc catches an edge right as it's coming in. But usually slower discs are gonna be a little bit more consistent to nestle right next to the basket. And along the same lines, a softer plastic can be helpful as well. A lot of people like throwing our classic soft plastic for their upshots because it tends to grab the ground really well. Because it's soft and it's flexible, it'll kind of bend and absorb the bumps on the ground. So good discs to throw for upshots are either a soft version of the putter that you use for putting. I personally like a Warden for my upshots, but a lot of people find success with the Harp or the Suspect or the Slammer or the Caltrop. Because we're so used to throwing powerful shots off the tee, it can be hard to back some power off for the more controlled upshots. So as far as technique for throwing upshots, the number one thing that I focus on is shortening my reach back. I still need to reach back straight, but if I only reach back to the left side of my chest as opposed to turning my shoulders farther away and reaching the disc all the way back, that ends up taking a lot of power off. So the rest of my throw feels fairly normal, but it just has a lot less power because I didn't reach back as far. It's also helpful to try and spin the disc as much as you can because that extra spin is going to help the disc fly more consistently and that gives somewhere for your energy that you're throwing with to go rather than just powering the disc as hard as you can down the fairway. I usually change my grip for upshots. I throw with a power grip off the tee, but for upshots I throw with a controlled grip, which is the same grip as my power grip with the pointer finger and the pinky finger, but my other two fingers are spread out underneath the bottom of the disc, and that just provides a little less resistance as the disc is leaving my hand, and it lets me have a little bit more touch when I throw those upshots. A lot of people also find success with a fan grip where maybe their only their pointer finger is like they would be it would be for a power grip and the rest of their fingers are kind of fanned out underneath the bottom. Grip is something personal. Some people do throw up shots with a power grip, but I would try messing with that if you're having trouble getting a consistent release on those lower powered shots. Usually a disc will have a lot less speed hitting the ground if it's flying a little bit nose up. 
Now, nose up is typically something that we want to avoid off of the tee because we're trying to get the most aerodynamic flight as possible to get the maximum distance. But for upshots, it can be helpful to throw the disc a little bit nose up. So to do that, what I personally do is I just change my grip. My control grip that I use for upshots actually sets the disc back a little bit in my hand to where it's tilted backwards a little bit more nose up. But if that's not comfortable for you, you can try lowering your elbow. Keeping your elbow down will usually tilt the disc back a little bit or lowering your release point. If your release is too low, that'll lots of times air skip the disc and that kind of sends it hovering like an alien spacecraft right towards the basket. For forehand upshots, typically the, the mistake that I see is people will yank these really far to the left. So to, do, to fix that, the way to take power off without yanking it to the left is just like backhands, shorten the reach back. Don't swing the disc as far back as you would for a drive. And then like Eric Oakley always says, follow through forward first. Make sure you're following through towards the basket and that will help keep the disc online and let you control the disc as it comes into land. Practicing upshots isn't something that comes naturally to me. I tend to assume that because the shot is so easy, I'll just make it. And so I pick up my drive and assume that I got the birdie and move on. But it doesn't usually work out like that when I'm playing a scored round. Regardless, the good news is that practicing upshots is one of the best bang for the buck practices that you can do to lower your scores. Just a few minutes of practice is really helpful towards feeling out how much power you need to apply to a disc to get a specific distance. And while I said hyzers are the most consistent, it's a good idea to practice some unique upshots just because you never know when you're going to need to bust out the upside down pancake or the forehand roller. Anyways, that is our complete guide to throwing upshots. Thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any tips that you'd like others to see down in the comments or what the craziest upshot you've thrown that worked out in your favor in the comments. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Dynamic Discs for more beginner's guide content on how to become a better disc golfer, and we'll see you next time.